After many years in design and almost three years in construction, the first phase of building a new causeway into Ocean City has come to a close. This contract wrapped up all major operations on time by the summer of 2009. To take over the second phase and bring the project to its conclusion, designers of the project, Michael Baker, along with the New Jersey Department of Transportation, sought a skilled construction company to conclude the project. The $251 million contract for the remaining work was awarded to Route 52 Constructors, a joint venture comprised of R.E. Pearson Construction Company and G.A. and F.C. Wagman Incorporated. It will be their task to transition smoothly with the work that has already been done and complete the rest of the causeway, and to tie into Ocean City and Summers Point and construct the remaining public amenities. The community gathered for the groundbreaking of Contract B on September 30th, 2009. Uh, it is a great day in Summers Point, in Ocean City, uh, in Cape May and Atlantic counties. And I am very, very happy today to join you to break ground on the largest project ever awarded by the New Jersey Department of Transportation. Work was officially underway. The scope of this contract includes not only the remaining causeway construction, but also the removal of the two existing drawbridges, the removal of the Summers Point Circle, construction of fishing piers, and a new visitor center. I was very fortunate to have the opportunity to work on this job. Um, typical projects that I would work on, uh, as most of us here, never approach the size of this contract. Um, it's, uh, it's something that we may never see again as far as the size and the type of amenities that are uh, included in this project. Bridge construction during this contract is going to focus on the high-level sections over Ship Channel and Beach Thoroughfare. One of the most significant constructability issues to arise is landing the new bridge in Ocean City while the existing bridge remains. The touchdown point into Ocean City was one of the most critical design aspects of the project. This is the area where you have the new bridge coming into Ocean City immediately in the footprint on the, of the existing bridge. To accommodate this, we staged the demolition and construction of the bridge in stages. A portion of the existing bridge was removed and we brought the new bridge in. The higher embankment fills had to be managed by using soil strengthening techniques uh, so that we wouldn't damage the adjacent apartments on either side of the causeway. A temporary retaining wall is built in Ocean City to allow the street's profile to be raised in stages. Ocean City is probably the most uh, challenging complication in the job there because we're coming in in a very, very narrow area where we have existing homes to either side of the bridge and right away could not be acquired that would have allowed us to expand the footprint there. So the bridges have to be built in stages half at a time that allows us to maintain traffic into the city. Eliminating the traffic circle in Summers Point is a large undertaking unto itself. MacArthur Boulevard is widened and the circle there is replaced with a signalized intersection. This will help alleviate the traffic back up onto the bridge while providing a landing site for the new construction. The orphaned Shore Road Bridge is also removed as part of this operation, which results in a much improved roadway geometry. Nearby the construction site sits the historic Summers Mansion. Built in 1720, this impressive home is one of the oldest buildings in New Jersey. The construction team takes great care not to disturb this landmark and ensure the proper preservation of this cultural resource. As part of the overall improvements, four fishing piers, a boardwalk, parking lots, and a new boat launch will be constructed at Rainbow Island. Additionally, Garrett's Island will be home to a new welcome center, where travelers can stop in to get information pertaining to Ocean City. I look at this project as a revamping of both Summers Point and Ocean City. When all this work is complete, you won't drive across an old dilapidated bridge. You'll drive across something that makes you feel like the city is, is booming. It, it really will bring both Summers Point and Ocean City to life. 
Nearby, environmental protection is a primary concern as a heron rookery sits adjacent to construction. The construction team takes the utmost care in these environmentally sensitive areas, erecting boundaries and closely monitoring the nesting ground to ensure there will be no encroachment on their habitat. Shoreline stabilization efforts, such as the installation of riprap and the planting of new greenery, will help to control erosion and maintain the natural beauty of the coast. One of the challenges in the project was uh, the dredging of the channels. Uh, there are two channels that we had to relocate uh, due to the geometry of the bridge. It was a ship channel and the beach thoroughfare channel. Uh, in order to do that, we had to dredge about up to five feet in depth. Uh, the separation had to be done between September and end of November due to en environmental restrictions. Uh, the material was pumped into two miles away to, onto a Malibu beach for uh, beach nourishment. In Ocean City, roadway improvements include the raising of 9th Street's profile to seamlessly meet up with the new bridge abutment, as well as construction of a shared-use walkway and landscaping along the road. As the bridge is a major artery into Ocean City, as well as a coastal evacuation route, Work must be done so as not to interfere with the flow of traffic onto and off of the island, particularly during the summer tourist season. That means timing is critical. Most major operations on the bridge must be completed during the off-season so that four lanes can be opened in time for summer. These operations require a great deal of coordination and planning. Eventually, the contractor had to use up to 14 cranes spread out over two acres of barge space to meet these strict staging constraints. The crews must work quickly, beginning by constructing the coffer dams that will be needed in order to build the rest of the foundation. After sheeting is driven into the bay, the coffer dams are dewatered to ensure a dry work area. Piles are then installed and driven down to depths of up to 100 feet. The coffer dams are then fitted with steel reinforcement bars and filled with concrete. This provides the support needed for each of the piers that must still be built. In total, there are 68 piers, all of which are cast on site. Reusable framework goes up along with thousands of pounds of steel reinforcement prior to concrete being poured. These columns are set rigid and are cured within a matter of days. Then the crews direct their attention to construction of the superstructure. Massive 167-foot precast concrete girders are floated by barge onto the construction site as crews prepare for the lift. These precast beams weigh as much as 110 tons each. Precast concrete serves the owner very well in this saltwater environment, so I believe that was that was probably the best selection. I think the uh, service life of the structure was weighed upon very heavily in design and I think at the end of it uh, all we we're going to be able to provide a, uh, a structure to the owner with very long longevity. This type of construction does not come without its share of challenges however. Extreme weather made an impact as the crews fought through hurricanes and storms. The winter of 2010 was particularly severe and which included an equally severe cost, a shorter window in which to work to get the bridge built on time. When the time finally arrived for the steel erection over ship channel, the contractor had to set up multiple shifts for several days in order to stick to their tight schedule. One of the major components also is that there was a window by which we can place beams above the navigable channel and that due to the schedule changes, that window got shortened to almost four days. So we worked with the contractor and uh, with the Coast Guard so that we can get the construction and the beams placed within this short window and they had to work double shifts for the, during these four days to make that happen. Once all the beams are set, work can begin on the bridge deck. First, precast deck panels are placed down, along with a series of interlocked reinforcement bars. These precast panels are pre-tensioned, which puts the concrete in compression 
and provides the durable strength the deck will need to last for decades. The crew then pours the concrete and smooths out the new bridge deck using a finishing machine. The crew makes sure that there are no imperfections in the concrete by removing any air that can become trapped inside during the pour. When everything is done, over 55,000 yards of concrete will be poured on this project. The abutment at Ocean City is completed as the impressive new span soars over beach thoroughfare. Privacy and glare screens are then installed to protect the residents of the nearby condos in Ocean City. As the remaining deck is poured, the contractors begin the process of switching traffic over to the new bridge in time to meet their deadline. On the evening of May 13, 2011, the last remaining tie-ins at Ocean City are made. Southbound traffic comes off of the old bridge for the last time. New lines are painted and traffic is finally rerouted. With summer traffic finally arriving, the crews focus their work on areas that won't affect motorists, such as the Summers Point abutment and the spans over ship channel. It is during this time that marine traffic is relocated along the beach thoroughfare channel to make way for the demolition of the existing bridge. Piece by piece, the old bridge deck is removed. The original pilings are stripped away as work begins on the towers. Finally, the bascule span is removed in a delicate operation, making room now for new construction to continue. There is still a long way to go as the estimated date of completion is December 2012. But the crews remain hard at work, always aware of the deadlines they must meet and the importance of opening this crucial bridge on time.